On today's video, I'm going to show you the third version of an iris greeting card. I've already done one that was just done with free motion stitching, and then we did one with ink tents, pencils, and thread sketching also. And this one is going to be applique and thread sketching. So um, the first step is to choose your fabrics, and for the actual appliques, I really like the hand dyed fabrics. Uh, I use fabrics from Star Design Fabrics because they have such amazing colors. I use them in most of my kits also. And so I have a purple for the flower and green for the grass and stems and whatever. And this one will be my background and this one will be the binding on the card. So once you've got those picked then you need to draw your design and uh, probably I will have this available for purchase also, but if you want to draw your, draw your own, um, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I'll just break it down into parts for you, which we did uh, on the other video also. So the, the main body is kind of a, I think it's kind of a peanut or pear shape. And then some what I call puppy dog ears. And probably you can draw better than me anyway, so do whatever you want. And a little crown on the top. Then it needs a stem, and I like to add a tall blade of grass. Um, really, I'm using a pen, but really the easiest way to do this is with a pencil and just draw right through it, Draw, and then you'll know it'll be all lined up, and then you can erase the parts that aren't supposed to show. Um, then a little bud, and then I'm going to add a blade of grass over here. Okay, and that's it for the pattern. So again, if you had pencil, you could erase those, but really what, then, what you then need to do is trace it with a Sharpie, which I did, and it's all wrinkled because my son's puppy spilled water on it. But part of my purpose of doing these videos is to show you that anybody can do these things. So I left my puppy water wrinkly card, <laughs> but then I traced it with a Sharpie because then I put it up to the window and put another piece of paper behind it and traced it in reverse. Uh, because when you trace, when you're using fusible web, you always want to trace your p pieces in reverse because they're going down on the, on the back of the fabric and it's going to be reversed. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter which way it faces, so you don't have to do that. But just realize that your finished card will be, or iris will be flipped the other way if you don't make a reverse copy. Okay, so I finally I have my reverse pattern that I'm going to use to trace onto the fusible web. I've already done that for uh, most of the pieces. I put the two purple ones near each other and then I am, have been working on the, the stems and grass and whatever. So I just have one more and it's the stem from the one with the butt on it. I make them a little bit longer than they need to be and I just can trace right through and go a little bit past, trace right through that leaf because it's just going to be a solid piece of fabric that you're going to layer. So these are already, I will cut them apart, you know, in between the two different colors of fabric. And then I have already fused them on to their proper fabrics and they get cut out and the paper peeled off the back. And then, once they're peeled off, you're going to just fuse them onto your background fabric. So my background fabric is cut to about five, and five by six inches to make a greeting card. That's a little bit extra, and then we'll trim it down to size later. I'm actually not even going to include that part in here, that step, because that'll that's the same for all of my cards, so I'm, I'll just do a separate video for those steps. And I also have underneath a piece of batting, five by six inches, and a piece of interfacing, same size, all um, to add stability for the stitching. You don't have to do that, but you do need some kind of stabilizer behind. You can't just really do your stitching on just this. You would need to use some kind of tearaway stabilizer or something, but that would be fine too. You don't have to put the batting. I like the texture that it adds to, use, to have the batting in there while I'm doing my stitching. So, the next step is to go to the sewing machine and do some stitching. Alright, now we're at the sewing machine and we need to do four different colors of stitching. So there's 
going to be some lighter purple veins on the flower and stitching the outline of the bud and then we have the green grass and some white and yellow on the inside of the flower so uh, you could do the stitching on the green parts before you put the purple flowers down which would definitely be easier um, I just did that all did it all at once to save some save a step um, but you could do that so I have light purple thread in my machine and set up for free motion stitching so I have my free motion foot and um, I also have lowered the top tension by just a little bit that just ensures that the bobbin thread won't come up to the top but right now I do want it to come up to the top so I'm going to do one stitch and pull that thread up so that it doesn't get in the way and I'm going to just stitch down the middle of one petal and then backtrack and make some little veins keep backtracking. I don't need to go all the way back to the middle because I'm going to do a little bit of yellow and white on that part. So now I could put those threads up. I'm just going to outline this little crown looking thing and do the same on this petal. Okay, and now this one I, I often make the, the line down the middle a little bit curved, add some dimension to it. the purple thread on you could even make a little swirly line through that if you want but all this is just very sketchy and not doesn't have to be precise at all all right now I've switched to white thread and pulled my bobbin thread up already um, the purple I used a little bit lighter than you may want to use I just want to make sure it showed up on the video so there's not going to be a huge difference between the white and the purple in this case but we're just going to do some some very scribbly stitching kind of out to where we finished the veins on that petal and then the same on this side kind of doing the same motion of the, as the veins but really I'm trying to fill it in but it doesn't have to be very solid either and the this bigger petal I'm leaving some room in the middle for the yellow if you want it to be more solid but again it's just very sketchy and now we'll switch to the yellow thread all right now I have my yellow thread on and I pulled my bobbin thread up and as you can see I'm way too lazy to change my bobbin thread in between but because I've lowered my top tension it's not going to show at all so um, I can get by with not using different bobbin threads I don't have to change that every time I change colors uh, it kind of depends what I'm doing but I often just leave whatever's in there because I lower the top tension so it's not going to show anyway. So now we're going to just a little bit more scribbling with the yellow. Sometimes I do just a little bit going up into those points as well. And that's it for 
the yellow. It's very scribbly, but it just adds a lot of detail or makes it a little bit more realistic. All right, now I've got the green thread on and I'm just going to trace the outlines of the grass. Um, again, this would have been easier to do before you even put the flower on and that's an option. Um, I partly left it because I'm also going to do some free motion stitching in the background using this same color thread so I can just do it all at once. Tracing the edges. They're very skinny, so they almost just have one line, but that's okay. Then I'm just going to pull this out of the way so I can go do the little parts that I missed. I'll trim these jump threads after. And I'm starting with um, just a couple of really small stitches when I start each new section. And also at the end. Alright, now I will trim. Maybe I'll just leave that one attached. Trim all these other jump threads. Get those out of the way. And I think I can just start my free motion stitching right from here. I'm just going to do a little bit of stippling. basic free motion stitching tip is the um, generally the machine needs to be going faster than you think and your hands can still go fairly slow and smooth to get the right size stitches but you're in control of the size of the stitches so I, I go pretty fast but the machine is the main thing that needs to be going fast but you can move your hands fairly slow To worry about the edges being perfect because they're going to get trimmed off anyway. And that's it. So it's ready to be trimmed and turned into a greeting card, which will be in another video. Thanks for joining us for our applique version of the Iris greeting card, and I hope you'll try it and watch for other videos coming up, and feel free to share, like, subscribe, all those things help um, pass these around so other people can enjoy them too. Thanks.